Belgium. Oh. Shin Robujira. What's going on there, friends and neighbors? I am Shin Rob Jira, and today I'm going to be talking about not one, but two figures from the Ultraman Defender of the Universe series. The Ultraman Defender of the Universe series is inspired by Ultraman Toward the Future, the Australian Ultraman. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise to me too, because this was listed on eBay as Ultraman Jack, because... I guess his little human form over here, his name is Jack Shindo. So it's like, oh, it's Jack, and that's gotta be Ultraman Jack, too. No. And he's got a little triangle thing on his chest instead of a little bleepy bleep. But we'll get to that in a minute. Today I'm going to be talking about Ultraman Great and Bogan, who had his box stamped out by a possible FedEx employee or just possibly a really bad moment in time to which it was at the bottom of a pile of boxes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, camera malfunction. Anyway, yes, I'm going to be opening up this figure and the Ultraman Great figure today on screen, and I'm going to be talking about them a little bit. They appear to be very simple figures, so yes, I'm going to try and do as much with this video as I possibly can. Let's give these on over to the good Dr. Schnipp and Schnipsons. Yeah. <sighs> Doctor. <sighs> <laughs> I've returned, I snip and I slice. <laughs> I think I go for big booger noodle. <laughs> now, und that just an insult to me. This und very bad of you, FedEx. I will remember this for the rest of my days. Ooh, cripes. Look at that, that is just long. Oh. This I'm spectful. Oh dear, okay, let's not try and further go with the ball. Oh wow. Won't glue line anyway, anyway. Just don't look at this box, it got totally wrecked. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here on the figure. Uh, oh <laughs> time for what you are all truly here for. I'm only going to cut you down like Neo Song. <laughs> oh, Jeebin Krukenhagen. <laughs> ah, <laughs> now I'm going to do the third. <laughs> I'm going to be careful with the head thing. Okay. Uh, now we move on to over. Ay, 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 ay. Let's get rid of all of this. Even though Box is absolutely untotted by FedEx! Let's do our own best to, uh... You know, I really do have to say so. Und really must say so. This is a uh, very cheap, it's very thin, it has no structural integrity there. But I'm not reviewing Box or anything, I am just cutting figure out of Box. Let's try and keep this one in the good condition. Alrighty, righty, you know. What we doing? What we working with here? Oh, Oh, there is old other Ultraman sticker. Oh man, why is this sh Oh, it's taped on. Okay, you know, we don't fuck with books. On the van? Heinz Drogen on the van. Ultraman deserves three or four. He's Earth's greatest hero. Okay, on oh, take out of my. Oh, he got some wear and tear on those cheeks, though. <laughs> Just look at this, look at the, they, they try and hide the snippings from Dr. Snipping Snips. Mm, it does not work like that, no, no, no. Won't not, sorry. Okay, let us get uh, this little cheap out of there and, um, you know what, we, uh, we, 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 Take back where we found it. Now I, I am just bored doing with this, so I give it back to Rob. Oh, Rob! That dude seriously has absolutely like no consistency in his voice. He really needs to work on it. So on the back of Ultraman's box, we can see the rest of the line that was available at the time of this series creation. Better get an anana, kill a Z. Sounds like a bad rapper name. <laughs> Welcome to the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Majaba Grukadan, our boy Bogan, Hummer, South Top, and of course Ultraman Great. Uh, on the side of the box, it just says Ultraman Green and Purple. Do like the colors that they used on these. Very, very nice, very eye catching. And over here we have a read up Ultraman and the Mutant Monster Menace. <laughs> That's it. So starting off with Bogan here, boy. 
boy does his name match his appearance. This guy looks like a bogan. He's different colors of green. He's got this weird gigantic curly up on top of his head that he uses as a whip. And he is just an interesting design, which honestly just fits with the Ultraman theme overall. Ultraman Kaiju are really, really different and very, very creative, have very wild and insane designs. This, I feel, is a little tame compared to some. But overall, I, I love the color, I love the paint, I love the design. This is weird. He's like a noodle boomerang with legs and whip. He's got two faces, and I guess before we get into articulation, let's take a look at these details and paints, huh? So, the top head, whom I call Pinky. He looks really, really good. Something that really surprised me, especially on a figure like this, is just that the teeth are all separate. They are separately molded. You can can even see on the opposite end over here that the tooth is separate from the rest of the mouth. I don't know if you can really tell that from a head-on perspective, but I can, especially like over here, you can see them jutting out somewhat. Yeah, see what I mean? You can like really tell that the bottom row all separately molded and they're actually leaving the mold a bit, while the upper row, while individually painted and sculpted, they are more solid with the mouth. They are not going to be leaving the mold like the bottom row is and it looks very very nice the inside of the mouth is painted nice and red and fleshy and blah, blah, blah. the eyes are nice they've got uh, the crazy pupil a lot of really nice detail on this head got a horn up here and everything again very very nicely detailed for what is considered a four and up figure toy if you will lots of great wrinkles got some I don't even know what you would call that. He looks like the underside of a tentacle. These are like little suckers. We got some dorsal fins up here that are nicely painted and nicely detailed for what they are. Very, very nice. And I just really like that you got these weird like little suction cups on his underside over here. You can kind of see like a vein or like a bend in where the suit would bend or something like that. And I just really, really like the scale detail like here, like uh, alligator skin and everything. And I like how it clashes with like the more wrinklier other side of the skin on Bogan. Very, very nice. It really helps the figure stand out because when you look at it from far away, like look at that. Yeah, that's going to stand out because look at those green. But you know, getting real nice up and close, taking a look at the nitty gritty, this figure is really going to stand out on a shelf and that's very important for figures nowadays. You need to catch the eyes of the little ones and the idiots like me. You need to have the bright colors and Bogan, he's bright. But when getting down to his other half over here with, um, <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so unimpressed. A little bit of paint smudgy right there. When getting down to Bogan's other half over here, his uh, crotchal half, you can see there is still a lot of amazing detail, a lot of amazing paint. I like that this light limish green really pulled through in the bottom over here. And I like that there's actually separation over here, minus that red paint. We are not talking about that. I like that the, it's like a form of shading. It's nothing crazy over here. Like I, I think the camera's really doing it some justice, but it's literally just a teeny shade darker than the rest of the stomach. But there is a lot of nice paint and detail going on over here. I especially love this face, this face. He is unimpressed. He doesn't want to be here. He is on the bottom. He is being pushed along. It sucks. <laughs> He's got this weird schnoz going on up here that looks like vent cleaning material. I got some very ferocious looking teeth over here. They are more so fused into the mouth. They are sculpted on top of the mouth. They will not be leaving the sculpt like upper head over here with his lower jaw, but this is looking very, very nice. Very, very reptilian, if you can call it that. Looking on the bottom side of the figure, there's really not too much going on. We do have the copyright. The copyright is very, very small, but as you can see, 1990s, Subaraya Productions, made in China. And uh, most of the backside is like that until you get over here to the back backside of the figure. Got his little nub of a tail. Got some more fins over here, very nicely painted. Got more of these suction cup thingies. And then we have the fins on the feet, which are going to be painted on both sides. Now, when I first got this out of the box, I thought, you know, maybe he'd be like this because, you know, that looks, you know, right to such an extent, I guess, but it's not. You have to um, just move these back like so, and I feel like that really just pulls him together. So with doing that, you saw that these things can move. I do believe, yes, they can go all the way around. On both sides, you will be able to go all the way around with these uh, 
webbed legs here. His uh, little whip his hair back and forth uh, whip up here can, you know, go all the way around. He's got helicopter hair like Rayman. And then the other head, well, the upper portion of the figure can go all the way around. You can do some crazy stuff like this. Double team into Ultraman or something like that. That sounded dirty. I apologize. But for the most part, that is all you're going to get out of the figure. The figure does look nice. I really am liking what I'm seeing from this so far. Liking the paint, liking the detail, minimal but not too minimal. A lot of fun. Reminds me of Marmot figures. Let's get to talking about Ultraman, shall we? Ultraman, great. And he is rather great. But first, we need to talk about Jack Shindo. And for a tiny little figure like this, a tiny little figure that is just about three inches tall, there is some nice detail on here, but him being so small, a lot of the detail is just lost because he is molded in one color. But you can see he's got a star over here. He's got zippers and buckles and wrinkles on his uniform. Bend him over. He's got the cheeks. You can see that belt. Uh, 1990 Subaraya Productions made in China. Got a little screw hole on the back. Overall, for a tiny figure, looks good. It's molded in one color. Wasn't expecting anything more of this. And the face is all right. The eyes look a little wonky. The detail on the face is, you know, a little bit to be desired is one ear over here. It looks like it was... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> look at the ear! What happened to your ear, Jack? Because <laughs> the other one looks fine. The arms can go all the way around as can the head. Nice and tight. And, um, you know, Legs can go that far forward, not too far back. Likely to sit him down in a vehicle from this series. I know not all of them were released, but he can do that. And little Jack Shindo came with a gun that you can just place in his hand like so. Uh, it's not the tightest fit, but as you can see, there is a lot of very nice detail on this little blaster. It is not just in the shape of a blaster. We can uh, see different little grooves and some like little orbish looking things there. Very, very nice. Now, let's talk about Ultraman. Ultraman! Great! Uh... Yeah. So here we have Ultraman Great, the first Heisei Ultraman from the Heisei Ultraman series. And for the most part, this Ultraman is pretty basic. Like, you know, you got your red, you got your silver, you got your little doohickey on the chest that lets you know, hey, bruh, some shizzling, some... You ain't got much time to be Ultraman, you gotta dip. And apparently in this series, the reason why this would start flashing is just because Earth was just so polluted, Ultraman just had to, you know, dip Vandito out of there. But for the most part, this figure is very nice. As you can see, the silver is very shiny. The red is very solid. It is a very, very nice looking figure. The only issue I think I have with this is there's just not enough articulation on it. Like, you know, we got the basic swivel in the head. We've got the basic swivel in the arms and such. We can... Uh, go all the way around at the torso and legs can go all the way around as well. I do feel if I can only add one set of articulation to this figure it would be for the elbows just because, you know, you're only going to be able to get so much out of having a pre-bent elbow and a non-so-bent elbow. Like, you're only going to get so many iconic poses out of this thing and, you know, having them both up at the same time, it kind of just looks awkward and weird. <laughs> but, like, you know, having them at a specific angle and such, you know, Ultraman looks pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely think that this could have benefited from at least some hinge joints at the elbows. But with how light this thing is, and believe me, it is light and it is squishy, as you can see. I don't think putting uh, hinge joints in the elbows would have been, I don't know about possible, but I don't know if it would have been just a good idea in general. Okay, you already saw the articulation, so I guess we'll get in nice and close for some details. We have the classic looking Ultraman face, but we got some big ears on the side of his head. Not bad, not bad. I really like the look of Ultraman great. This looks uh, somewhat similar to Ultraman Jack from The Return of Ultraman, aka the best Ultraman of the original series so far, in my opinion. And apparently that's a very shared opinion amongst Ultraman fans, that Ultraman Jack is the best of the Showa era. My figure did come with uh, some scuffage on the back and some scuffage on the butt cheeks over here. The butt cheeks, I don't mind. Cheeks are cheeks. But uh, over here, this is a little upsetting that it came like that, but this has also been boxed since 
the year 1990, so to think anything more or anything less would come damaged or scraped would have been just silly. The application on the silver is very nice. In a few areas you can see, like especially over here, you can see that it was like a little heavily handed painted, but heavily handed painted? Yikes. It was painted not too great, but on other areas of the figure you can see that it's pretty prime, rather perfect. You know, a few slip ups here and there. Nothing that is going to overall stop you or me from enjoying the figure. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of spillage on the blue triangle over here. I don't remember the official name of it, but uh, I think this little dip of red, no, that is going over just a little bit, just the teens. But if you do plan on picking these figures up, do expect some paint imperfections on them in some areas. Some of it, uh, you know, is going to bleed through just a tick, but it's going to look great overall. I think this is pretty dang cool looking. And I really do like that they're, you know, rather lightweight, like cool. Okay, I really wanted to go over scaling because scaling seems to be one of the more prominent complaints that I've seen of this line. And it's just that, you know, Jack Shindo is much too tall. The monster isn't as big as Ultraman is when in the show, like particularly the first episode when Ultraman Great meets Bogan, this head is more so level with his head. Like they're same height and everything, not level. Scaling is a bit off. The, uh, the vehicles were too big in comparison to Ultraman, but that I really don't find to be much of an issue, especially with me, just because these came out around the time that, you know, I was a young child, but I'm used to things not being in scale. And as I said earlier, as long as the figures look cool together and they are somewhat around the same height, it really doesn't bother me. But like if this Ultraman figure was the same height, but this was a little bit smaller, uh, then yeah, I'd have a problem with it, but they're around the same height. Before I forget, uh, each Ultraman figure and each Ultraman monster comes with a, uh, a sticker. They look really cool. I like that these kind of look like jerseys, like a sports, uh, sports shirts, jersey icons or something like that. I'm destroying <laughs> the English language right now. I like that they are stylistically made. These would look really cool on shirts, as patches, anything like that, posters even. Very, very cool little inclusion. But yeah, in terms of scaling, yeah, the scaling's not so great, but I really don't care. If you're a scaling nut, then you will have an issue with this. If you're not, you'll like them either way, I think. Maybe. Hmm. Here is Ultraman Great and Bogan with the Bandai Telsadon and the Bandai Jiris. Jiras, rather. Here is Ultraman Great Jack Shindo and Bogan with the Bandai 500 Series Original Ultraman, the Bandai 500 Series Ultra 7, and the Bandai 500 Series Ultraman Jack. See, I'm not crazy, right? They do look somewhat similar. Right? And here's Ultraman Great, Bogan, Jack Shindo, with the Mill Creek release of Ultraman, the return of Ultraman, aka Ultraman Jack, on Blu-ray. A little steelbook collection with the informational guide and the two stickers. This is everything together. And here it is at a different angle. Yeah. Shwack! Anyway, this has been my review of the Ultraman Great and the Bogan figure from the Ultraman Defender of the Universe series or Ultraman Toward the Future series. These are really, really cool looking figures. I really like how they look. I like their paint. I like the material they're made out of, even though they do feel a little bit on the cheap side, just a teens. I really ended up falling in love with these things a lot more than I expected. And if this video does well enough and you lot seem interested enough, I'll buy more. <laughs> I will definitely get more from this particular line. I mean, it's bad enough that Godzilla Productions Productions TV and Corey are kind of like uh, pushing me into the Ultraman fandom more and more as the days go by. And with these, I think I've given myself the final push and now I am just in trouble. <laughs> but anyway, I really, really like these. If you would like to see more from this specific Ultraman toy line, please do let me know. I would not mind getting more of these. And uh, until Friday, everybody, when I do my review of the Hyper Maser Blast version of Godzilla 2003 from NECA's Godzilla line, RIP. I will see you all then and there. Hope you enjoyed this quick little video. See you next time.